Hey everybody, we're going to be continuing the power of a name with the name Methuselah. I'm sorry I haven't done these in a little bit, but my voice has been going out and it's finally starting to come back. So I hope that uh, I haven't waited too long that you've forgotten about this series. Anyway, <clears throat> Methuselah. He was born in 687 AC, standing for after creation, and died in 1656 after creation. His name in Hebrew means man of the dark, the spear, or the javelin. Pick one, either one's fine. And it also means his death shall bring judgment. I'm going to do differently this time, and I'm going to be starting with 1656 AC. What happened then? The flood. Noah's flood. It brought judgment. It was said that this man's birth after he would die that there was a prophecy that his death would bring judgment upon mankind and that is exactly what happened when he died that's when the flood waters came upon the earth boom just like that so and if we are uh considering how all these things sort of like have been repeating themselves, I have a feeling that someone on this earth, before the coming judgment upon the earth, someone will die, have died, to represent the mark of the judgment. That's... I cannot tell you if that is 100% true or not, but uh, so far, as far as the events that have been recorded throughout history, it has been true. So, it might be somebody that's important that once they are uh, killed or maybe they just die of natural causes that the kingdom gets in an uproar or something. Maybe it's the caliph that's assassinated or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but I have a feeling that it's going to be somebody that's really important that has an effect on everybody. Maybe even the Pope. He's uh, foretold of his own death apparently um, by ISIS. So I don't know. I can't tell you. But uh there's also scripture that talks about that uh, the death of the uh, Antichrist being thrown into the lake of fire would bring about God's judgment upon the people as well, where he judges everyone after that time. That could be what it's talking about too. So maybe the Antichrist is the one who's death shall bring judgment or antichrist as in multiple um anyway it's interesting then you go to 1656 bc and you'll notice that it says jacob also known as israel which was his new name dies and because of israel's death uh, it leads to the enslavement of the Israelites in Egypt. Not exactly immediately, but as soon as Jacob and Joseph and his family pretty much passed away, that's when everything bad started going for happening for the Israelites. Because as long as Joseph was still around, they had no reason to put him in slavery. But as soon as Joseph was gone, they had no one else that was to take his mantle as a uh, person in charge of grain. And plus, they were probably out of famine by then and all that. So it's like they felt threatened by the Israelites, so they enslaved them. Uh, if you want the specifics, I wrote, uh, I found... I wrote, I found 
Uh, Jacob and sons entered Egypt in the year 1656 BC and were granted special permission to live in the fertile district of Goshen, also known as the district of Ramesses. Hint, hint, he's the one who throws them into slavery. Following the death of Jacob and Joseph, the Israelites would fall prey to the Egyptians and thrown into slavery. So yeah, I'm guessing it was referring to the death of Jacob originally, but I think that Joseph had to go too because he was in the line of uh, Israel. So, yeah. Anyway, that's the way that goes. Then we go to 687 AD, and this story is kind of interesting too because it says King Wall of Kent and 12 companions. That kind of sounds uh, familiar, doesn't it? I'm sure you've heard of Jesus and the 12 disciples. It's kind of uh, eerie that it's got exactly 12 companions that this man had and that they are all burned to death in, in a Kentish uprising. Jesus and his disciples were all hung on a cross. So, it's very similar, uh, to say the least. And because of this, King Kadwala gets revenge by ravaging the kingdom. So, let me find my spot on my page and I'll read the specifics to you. Alright. King Mole of Ken and 12 companions are burnt to death during a Kentish uprising. His brother King Kadwala of Wessex ravages the kingdom in revenge. Death of ex-King Edric of Kent. Bishop Bossa of York is removed from office and Saint Wilfred is given the see of York. Saint John of Beverly is made Bishop of Hexham Abbot Edhaid of Ripon is also removed and the abbacy restored to Wilfred. Bishop Cuthbert of Lindisfarne resigns his office and retires to his hermitage on Inner Farm where he dies. He is buried in Lindisfarne Priory and later revered as a saint. Bishop and Saint Wilfred of Ripon temporarily administers the See of Lindisfarne. Abd Malik ordered the Dome of the Rock to be built on the site where Umar built a fence. This is also during this year 687. Uh, under the Umayyad Caliphate, which if you remember we were talking about the uh, Daniel 11 verse 6. And it says, after some years they will become allies. The daughter of the king of the south will go to the king of the north to make an alliance. But she will not retain her power and he and his power will not last. In those days she will be handed over together with the royal escort and her father and the one who supported her. So this is what this part is referring to. Uh, so under the Maya Caliphate, the Islamic Empire reached 5 million square miles the largest empire in history to that point. In 750, the Umayyads were replaced by the Abbasids, who were an Arab dynasty led by Persian general. Although the empire was still Arab, the Persians had a significant influence during that period. They even moved the capital from Damascus to Baghdad, perhaps to be closer to Persia. The Abbasids traced their ancestry to an uncle of Muhammad named Abbas. And we hear a lot about this Abbas in the news nowadays. Like, it's not the same Abbas, but it's definitely a, a descendant. Consequently, they considered themselves more of a true successor than the Umayyads, yet they were still just cousins, although they were Sunni Muslim. They converted to Shiite for a short time to attain military support during their revolt. 
Afterwards, however, they reverted back to Sunni, which angered the Shiites, as you can imagine. In fact, a Shiite dynasty eventually arose in the south to take half of the empire, which is in the next verse. After that, the Middle East remained split for centuries, but the Abbasid Caliphate ruled the northern half from Baghdad until 1258, when the Mongols invaded, which are in verses 9 and 10 which we will discuss in another video. Verses 9 and 10 of chapter 11, Daniel. So thank you for listening to this video. I hope you've been informed and uh, found this interesting. Short and sweet this video because not as much need to be discussed on the name because it was pretty straightforward, not a lot. Uh, but very pertinent. Not a lot of information, but very, very pertinent. That is directly tied to the name Methuselah and its definition. Man of the dark sphere, gathering, his death shall bring judgment. That's the big one. His death shall bring judgment. Even with the king of Maul and twelve companions, their death brought judgment upon the kingdom through the ravaging of the kingdom. So, and that's just very symbolic of uh, Christ and his companions after uh, Christ was crucified and what, and all the 12 disciples following him died, that uh, the Israelites also had received judgment through the Romans conquering them as well. Uh, throwing them into slavery and whatnot. I mean, eventually it went through the process of uh, everyone eventually losing power and Israelites being freed somehow at some point. Anyway, uh, like I said, history repeating itself over and over. So thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful day or night wherever you're listening from.